I told, I told, um, I'm going to tell them myself. I told that the, the people that need to know what I'm doing because they pay, and the people that need to know what I'm doing because they usher, and the people that need to know what they're doing because they assist in different things, and I said, how can I tell you what I'm doing? I don't even know what I'm doing. <laughs> Wait for me, it'll happen. Anybody seen Undercover Boss? Yeah. Reality show? I'm telling it myself right now. The only reason I like that show is because as a former person who did, you know, was a boss, I'm not a boss anymore though. <laughs> as a former person who was a boss, I always wanted to do that. You know, somehow I'll get in amongst your employees, you know, and let them say stupid stuff right in front of you. And, you know, them, you know. But I don't know why, but I was walking to church this morning and crossing the bridge. I had my bridge moment this morning. That's what come to me about the message this morning, you know, undercover boss. The road, the road to Emmaus. The boss shows up and he starts saying stuff and you know, you're not even sure what you're saying and the boss is right there with you and he's like shaking his head like, what? And they're saying, well, what, how, how, how do you not know what all's going on here, you know? That, that, are you the only person in Jerusalem that doesn't know what's, what's happening? And Jesus continues to walk with him and just expounds the, the scriptures. And tells him about all the things that was going to happen, that needed to happen. And the only response that we can get right off the bat when the two dis disciples that are walking with him is that, that, that the words that should cut right to us this morning, and that's the gist of the whole thing, and summed up in three words, we had hoped. Remember last week? Now faith is an assurance of, that you should hope for, and certainty about that which you can't see, Hebrews 11.1. I mean, get your Bibles up when you go home, underline that one. So the question we asked last week is, how certain and how sure are you? And it's okay if you're not 100% sure and 100% certain because we are just like the folks that are walking along the trail to Emmaus. We're pilgrims as well. The definition of a pilgrim is somebody that's on a journey, a faith journey perhaps, that is going for to a holy place. So, doesn't that kind of describe us? I mean, isn't that what we're doing? We're along a path? Don't we say that we're uh, walking the path that God has given us? Or that we're uh, uh, following in the footsteps of Christ? So this idea of walking and being with Christ along the way is not something new or foreign. And we're trying to get to the same place. We, we're, we're, our quest is holiness. We want the eternal life. We want that life with Christ that lasts forever and ever and ever. That's part of this kingdom that is established now that Christ came, that it would be established. And then it would last for eternity so that we can start in it now and never stop. Isn't that glorious? But the, the two pilgrims say, you know, but we had hoped. We had hoped. All that hope, all that, all that Hosanna waving that happened in, in a week ago was nailed to the cross and put in the tomb, and we had hoped. And now it's gone. And all that, all that, the, 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 all of our following, all of our efforts, and all the things that we wanted, it's just that, you know, the Romans are still there. Our, our Messiah is dead. And we had such great hope. So, we have this faith that this assurance of things that we hope for and a certainty about that which we can't see. So we join the disciples as they're walking along the Emmaus Road and we have the benefit of knowing that <laughs> right? We know how the story ends. So we're just you know, we're trying to come on, doesn't it? We want them to see the risen Lord. We want them to see. Open your eyes. And then we wonder why they can't see it. How come? Is it dark? Is the morning so much that the, the, the grief that their eyes are just so tear-filled, swollen, that they can't recognize Jesus when Jesus comes alongside? Or is it in the resurrected Jesus that they get changed somewhat so he, does, he doesn't look the same? 
And what about his voice as he sits there and opens up the scriptures and talks to them the whole way through a man that may have taken two hours. We don't know when they joined him on the road, but he opened up the word to talk to us, talk to them. And we know that they said that didn't our hearts burn when he was there with us. But they still didn't see him. And that goes to what part of the problem is that, that we're only allowed to recognize, and that's the word that they use. They recognize Jesus and the breaking of the bread. They didn't recognize Jesus in the expounding of the word. Their hearts burned, but they still didn't see. And as Jesus picks up the bread, you wonder, did they not see the nail holes that he showed the disciples in the room? Why did they see it when he broke the bread? Is it because they were possibly that they were there when Jesus fed the 5,000? That they were part of that group when Jesus said, sit down. And he took the bread and broke it. And gave thanks to God for it and blessed it. And said to his disciples, give it to them. Feed them. And something about that resonated with them. That's Jesus. In the ordinary, ordinariness of, of daily life is when we recognize Jesus. It's in the things that we do all the time, in the breaking of the bread. How did he get Mary's attention in the tomb that morning? He spoke her name. He stood right alongside her. She didn't recognize him until Mary. The hearing of her name is what caused her to, I recognize, I've seen the Lord now. And Peter, later on, around the Sea of Tiberias, Jesus will come to him, and Peter will not recognize him at first until they ask him, have you no fish? Have you not caught any fish? And he will be affirmed in his vocation. In the ordinariness of what he's doing, you start to see a pattern here? be a brief sermon this morning, but if the Emmaus Road doesn't tell us anything else, it tells us that Jesus comes to us where we live, in the ordinariness of where we are, and it's up to us to open up our eyes and see it, to recognize Him, because Jesus is constantly revealing Himself to us. So there's two parts of what happened on the, on the Emmaus Road. The revelation that always takes place, but there's always a recognition. And so that's our challenge today is that we have to be both. We have to be both the receiver of the revelation and the one who recognizes it. Because you take the recognition of Jesus and you wear it inside yourself, now you're the revealer. And our great journey is never about it ourselves, it's always about the stranger that comes up to us that we welcome in and reveal Christ to. Because we're not privileged to be born 2,000 years ago where we could stand at the tomb or stand in the room and look at the hand and touch the side. But we have to be just that certain or else our faith does us no good. If we are not as absolutely convinced that Christ is alive, then how will you ever share that with someone else? How will you ever nurture these children here and convince them of anything more than a story? You see? So, then the breaking of the bread. Christ is alive. In calling your name, Christ is alive. In the affirmation of what you do in your job, in your daily living, in your golf game, in your trip to the grocery store, in everything, the way you drive your car, Christ is alive. There's a prayer by St. Patrick. And when we can pray this prayer and know the truth of it, then you have understood the revelation and the recognition. That once we get to where we don't have to do much turning, and once we get to where we don't have to open very many doors, that we see Christ everywhere we look, now you can reveal that Christ to others. Every step of the way, every inch of the way, and it's not hard for somebody to walk through that door and know Christ is alive in this place. And it's not hard to go down the hallway and for your children to know that Christ is alive in this place. That's where we've got to get to. The Emmaus story is about revelation and recognition. 
It tells us where we need to be so that we can be 100% sure about our faith. A certain of that which we do not see. Because once Christ was revealed to them, He vanished from their sight. Not so that they would never remember Him again, but the first thing they do is they run back to Jerusalem and declare Him to be alive. Pray with me. Christ with me. Christ before me. Christ behind me. Christ in me. Christ beneath me. Christ is above me. Christ on my right. Christ on my left. Christ when I lie down. Christ when I sit down. Christ when I arise. Christ in the heart of everyone who thinks of me. Christ in the mouth of everyone who speaks of me. Christ in every eye that sees me. Christ in every ear that hears me. In the breaking of the bread. How important is that? In your walk forward to receive the bread, you will see Christ on your